Welcome to the fascinating world of inverse problems. This lecture is part of my course Convolution and Deconvolution, which I teach at the University of Helsinki. The goal of this video is to introduce an important mathematical tool, the singular value decomposition for matrices, in the simplest case I can imagine. To follow the lecture, you need to know basic linear algebra and matrix calculations. Let's get started. So the SVD for a matrix A looks like this. A equals the product of three matrices, U, D and V transpose, where D is diagonal and U and V are these very rigid orthogonal coordinate transformations. SVD can be calculated for any matrix whatsoever, regardless of size, and also for real and complex matrices. In this talk, we will restrict to 2x2 two two matrices A that are circulant. Circulant matrices have the same thing repeating on every row, but shifted. So you see here, the first row is C0 and C1. In the second row, we shift this thing one step further, so C0 is here and C1 is actually then flipped to the other side. This is a circulant matrix, and we can also see this as a filtering operation. If we have a, a signal or vector F1, F2, and we multiply by this matrix, the result is this one, which can be seen as filtering in signal processing. So let's see how. We place our convolution kernel or filter C0, C1 on top of our, our, our signal F1, F2 so that the uh, central element in our kernel, which uh, is the first one, will be on top of the first element in the signal. We multiply this one, we multiply this one and sum and we get uh, this result. And then the filtering continues. The filter moves one step so that now the central element C0 is on top of F2. And now our signal is so short that already at this point C1 falls outside uh, our signal. So what should we do? There are many possibilities. We will be using the so-called periodic boundary condition where we just flip whatever is over uh, the end of the, sig uh, the, the, uh, the signal, we just flip it over to this side. And that's how we get by multiplying and summing this result. So, this is the matrix vector multiplication with the circulant matrix. And here you see the result. The filtering process gives the first element in this vector, when the filter is on top of the signal like this, and then we take a step forward with C1 flipping over, and then we get the second element here. That's how circulant matrices are implementing filtering with periodic boundary conditions. Then let's introduce a little example that will run throughout this lecture. It's a little puzzle about uh, the ages of Zoe and Bill. So let's say we know two things. Twice Zoe's age plus Bill's age gives 80. And twice Bill's age plus once Zoe's age gives 70. And then we should compute what is uh, Zoe's age Z and Bill's age B. We can write this puzzle in matrix form like this. Uh, of course, this is quite simple to solve. But uh, for the sake of the uh, lecture, we will do this by using the singular value decomposition. Okay, uh, actually, in our course Convolution and Deconvolution, we are concentrating on filters that sum up to one and are non-negative and where the central element is, is the largest one. So we get further assumptions. Uh, both C0 and C1 are non-negative, they sum up to 1, and C0 is larger than C1. So actually, uh, we, can, we can write our circulant matrix using just one parameter, P. P between uh, 1 half and 1 
strictly larger than one half. So we have p here, and since the other, uh, since the the uh, filter elements need to sum up to one, there is no other chance for this element to be than one minus p. So we are actually looking at matrices that have this very specific form. And for deconvolution, which is kind of recovering the original signal from the filtered one, for that one, we are interested in the inverse of this matrix. And of course, also for recovering uh, Zoe's and Bill's age. Okay, so let's write uh, our puzzle in the form that satisfies these assumptions. So uh, we divide both sides of the equation by three. So then we get uh, the filter elements to sum up to one. And also we have to subtract on the right hand side. So this is now an equivalent problem for solving uh, Z and B. So something for you to check. Does this matrix satisfy the assumptions? And what is P in this case? Then we will derive the singular value decomposition for this uh, specific matrix we have. For that, we need eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Those are, uh, for a given matrix, those are some very special vectors and numbers that behave in this way. Then when, when we multiply the vector, the eigenvector V with the matrix A, it actually just is a multiple of V. So the matrix A doesn't turn the vector V to any direction, the result will be on the same line uh, specified by the vector v. Uh, the eigenvector has to be a non-zero vector, and it's a very useful technique for many purposes to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. So let's find the eigenvectors and eigen uh, eigenvalues for uh, matrices A of this specific form. So first of all, let's remember that both of our rows here sum up to 1. Therefore, if we multiply this vector 1 and 1 with matrix A, we will get the same vector 1 and 1. So this means that 1, 1 is an eigenvector for matrix A with eigenvalue 1 here, which is uh, in an invisible way <laughs> here, multiplying the vector. Actually, we want our eigenvectors to be uh, of unit length, so we can uh, divide this vector by its own length. So actually, we'll take our first eigenvector to be this one, and the corresponding eigenvalue is 1. Then we want to find the second eigenvalue. So for that, we need this equation to hold for some non-zero vector w. And with rearranging the terms a bit, we see that it means this here, where i is the identity matrix. So since the vector w is not zero, and still it's mapped zero by this matrix, the matrix A minus lambda I cannot be invertible. Otherwise, we would have a contradiction. And you know, in math, we shouldn't have those. So the determinant of this matrix must be zero. Let's write out what this means. Uh, the determinant looks like this. And arranging the terms a little bit, we get a polynomial like this. This is called the characteristic polynomial uh, of this matrix. And now we can use the uh, solution method we all know and love, uh, the quadratic equation solution formula. And then we get two solutions for this equation. One, which we already knew, and then lambda equals 2 pi minus 1. And remember that p was strictly larger than half and at most 1, so lambda will be between 0 and 1 and always strictly positive. So we have the second eigenvalue, but what about its eigenvector? So two cases. First of all, let's think that P is less than one. In that case, lambda is also smaller than one. Uh, so it's different from, our, from the other eigenvalue, which is one. In that case, we know from linear algebra 
that the other eigenvector must be perpendicular to the first eigenvector we have. So there is not much choice anymore left. Uh, there are these two choices we can take, and let's just take this one uh, for our second eigenvector. And then uh, this argument from here to here was assuming p is strictly less than 1. However, the case p equals 1 is very simple. Then a is just the identity matrix, and it has uh, twice the eigenvalue 1, and actually we can use the same eigenvectors we saw before, so v and w, w being this one. So now we can form the singular value decomposition for our matrix A. We know the eigenvalues, uh, 1 and 2 pi minus 1, and we can do diagonalization, which hopefully you remember from your uh, linear algebra studies. If not, please look it up. So we can write A in this form. We have here the matrix P that has uh, the eigenvectors as columns. Here is the inverse of P, which I calculated for you. It's this one. And on the diagonal matrix here, we have the corresponding eigenvalues. So eigenvalue 1 corresponding to this eigenvector, and eigenvalue lambda corresponding to this uh, eigenvector. So then we actually have uh, the decomposition A equals U D V transpose if we take P equals U and V transpose equals uh, the inverse of P. The diagonal matrix will be this one. So we are done. We found the SVD using uh, the diagonalization process. And now we can use the whole thing to solve our problem with Zoe's and Bill's age. So this is our uh, equation where A is this matrix right here. Now we can write uh, the inverse of A using the singular value decomposition. We remove the parentheses and according to matrix calculus, this is what we get V, D minus 1 and U transpose. And we know what is lambda, it's uh, one third. So the solution to our problem is V times this diagonal matrix. Note that here is uh, 1 over lambda. And here U transpose and here is the right hand side from our equation. So the final answer uh, will look like this. And let's see geometrically how that goes. So first we multiply by U transpose. So here is the right hand side vector. And multiplied by U transpose actually means uh, rotation of the vector by uh, angle pi over 4. So here you see the result, resulting vector uh, after we multiply by U transpose. Then the next step is multiplying by the diagonal matrix and that will just uh, stretch the second coordinate by a factor of 3. So you see there's a stretching vertically by a factor of 3 and horizontally everything stays the same. So this is kind of a uh, component-wise operation because uh, D minus 1 is a diagonal matrix. Next we use the V matrix which is clockwise rotation by angle pi uh, over 4 and that will uh, rotate this vector back to this direction. So finally this is our answer. It's V D minus 1 U transpose times the right hand side so that's why we can read off the ages of uh, Zoe and Bill from the projections of this vector to the coordinate axis. So we know that Zoe is 30 years old and Bill is 20 years old. And finally, here are a couple of exercises for you to go through the material. Uh, first of all, use the quadratic solution formula to find uh, the eigenvalues for the matrix. Prove that these identities hold when uh, U and V come from the diagonalization process. And then uh, this is mostly related to deconvolution and ill post inverse problems. See what happens when P uh, goes close 
to one half. What happens on the limit? Why does this formula fail? And how is it connected to the form of the convolution kernel at the point of failure? Thank you for watching and see you soon again. Remember to subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.